So this is my typical setup for um, diabetic eyes, 27 gauge vitrectomy. And the first step now is a peripherexis of posterior hyaloid, which means that um, we open up the posterior hyaloid on height of the equator. You see it very nicely um, in those parts where there is hemorrhage uh, behind the posterior hyaloid, like here in the inferior pole. Uh, usually the posterior hyaloid is attached at the central pole and detached in the periphery. Uh, it may be possible that the posterior hyaloid is even attached at the nasal pole, pole in the periphery. So the aim is to open up the posterior hyaloid in the periphery as much as possible. And if this is done, we um, move to the center of the eye and remove here the vitreous gel. Here the posterior hyaloid is completely attached. So the next step is um, to remove the posterior hyaloid at the central pole. I first stained um, the membranes with membrane dual in order to visualize the tissue better. And you see there, here's a very thick membrane at the lower arcade. So I do. Here are two ruptures which I'm which I diathermized. Now I'm using a 27 gauge ultra peel forceps from Dork um, to remove this thick membrane at the central pole. It is strongly attached. I always prefer 27 gauge for diabetic retinopathy because the um, vitreous cutter is superior. Um, because it is small and it helps you dissecting the membrane. So the 27 gauge cutter is superior to the 23 gauge and 25 gauge cutter because you can use it to dissect membranes. Now I am um, continuing with bimanual dissection. You have to work with a chandelier light. I'm using a Synergetics chandelier light from uh, AWH of. It's um, attached to a Xenon light. And in the right hand, I'm using now a um, 27 gauge curved forceps from Dork. In the left hand, a um, 27 gauge ultra peel forceps from Dork and I'm trying to um, remove these thick membranes. Next step is removal of this epiretinal blood. I have a silicon tip backlash instrument uh, in the right hand. Even now you can see that there is uh, that there are active vessels 
at this thick membrane even after treatment with ILEA and laser. So you can imagine how difficult the surgery would have been without prior treatment. Okay, now let's move to this very thick membrane. Um, which is very firmly attached to the underlying retina. So this is a thickened posterior hyaloid. And for these eyes you need patience and I recommend general anesthesia. So you see that there's a retinal rupture here, which is caused from the removal of this thick membrane. So I'm trying to remove the traction so that I do not enlarge this rupture. And now I am <coughs> uh, using the forceps in the left hand and the scissors in the right hand. Here is a small bridge which I will use now to cut the membrane in two pieces. But first I will remove more attachments on the uh, other side before I can widen this bridge or tunnel. You see now. And now I will cut this thick membrane in two pieces. Here is the tunnel or the bridge and I'm cutting this thick membrane in two pieces. There we go. So this big traction is removed <coughs> and now we can try to remove each piece separately. I'm still using the forceps in the left side and the scissors in the right side on the in the right hand. Try to distinguish the retina from the membrane. And please always have patience in these eyes. They just need their time. These are difficult surgeries, difficult pathologies, and they require much surgical time. Now I'm removing or aspirating or cutting the membrane with the vitreous cutter. It's a very fibrotic membrane, so it takes some time. I 
Now it is removed and we can continue with the uh, other parts of membrane which are left inside the eye. Here you see the other piece of the membrane stained with membrane dual. So I think I will first try to trim the membrane with the cutter. Again you see the huge advantage of this 27 gauge cutter. Um, when removing this membrane it's always important to remove the membranes completely but before you create big ruptures in the retina I recommend only to trim the membrane and leave residuous membrane in the eye. You need the right instruments and by manual technique to do a complete removal. If you don't have these instruments then I would only trim the membrane. But you must trim the membrane so much that the traction is relieved. The traction on the retina must be relieved so the, that the retina is mobile and can reattach. So in this case, this membrane you might be able to leave because the traction to the left part piece has been removed. So before you create, create major retinal ruptures I recommend to leave the membrane inside the eye. Only trim them. Okay, now we came quite far. I will next step I will um, diathermize, but before before I can do this, something strange happens. There is thick serpentine fluid coming out from the retinal rupture, and it is amazing how thick this fluid is. It must have been a long-standing retinal detachment. You see very nice the Schlieren phenomenon coming out from this retinal rupture. The next step is removal of epiretinal blood. I like to use the silicon tip um, back flush and then diathermy of bleeding vessels and here marking of the ruptures. I decide to remove this a small membrane Again, this membrane can be left uh, because it does not cause any traction. I'm holding up the membrane with the back flush cannula. There's no forceps in the left hand. There's only a back flush cannula aspirating the membrane and at the same time fixating it. It's a very nice technique. Instead of using a forceps, use a back flush cannula. Okay, now we can continue with a peripheral vitrectomy. And the next step is a fluid against air exchange. It 
and then of course removal of subretinal fluid Now comes the important step of laser photocoagulation and again do this by manual. In the left hand you hold the scleral depressor and the right hand um, performs laser coagulation. I have to do some more aspiration of subretinal fluid in order to laser treat the edges of the retinal ruptures. I'm using a silicon tip back flush instrument. The final step is injection of Avastin 0.1 milliliter and then a tamponade with C2F6. Now comes the follow up.